Welcome to today's 3D print. Sorry for the flickering. These bulbs don't like this dimmer. Um, got a new 3D print for you. The CR10 finished a new mega print. <laughs> First try, finished successfully, works perfectly coming off the print bed. This is for you, Darth Barkus. There it is, the Mars Scuttle. And the wings work. <laughs> this thing is amazing. The back of the wing came out rough. I really should add support to that, but I didn't feel like wasting the plastic. I could just grind that down and it'll be fine. Every other detail came out spectacular. I don't know how much you're going to see on the action cam here, but all the lines. Beautiful, beautiful model. The play is a little high because the tolerances were made for printing much smaller, so it has a lot more play, but that's okay, it doesn't affect its operation. The wings fold up perfectly, no problem. I didn't have to clear anything, the tolerances are so high. All the guns came out great. This model really is pretty cool. I don't remember the thing number, but I'll add it to the description. And this is also a new filament. I found another cheap filament on Amazon from a company called Sinoc. I got some of their white, and this is their gray. And uh, I think it was like 13 or 14 bucks a kilogram. Very, very cheap. But um, the gray is nice. Technically, okay, I know the shuttle's supposed to be white, but I still think spacecraft like this look better in a light gray. And um, plus, I wanted to use the gray and see how it came out, and it came out fantastic. It prints like this, with the wings partially open like that, and the hinges are print in place. If you can't see that, I gotta remember to look at the screen so I can see what you guys see. It prints like this on the print bed. No supports. Um, I think I used 15% infill or something like that. Yeah, I think it was 15% infill. It came out fantastic. All the details are there. All the edges are nice and sharp. CR10 is an amazing printer. I mean, if, if you've got the four or five hundred dollars to buy a CR10, it's, there's no question it's the it's the printer to buy. I mean, it's it's the cat's meow. It's the best bang for your buck as far as cheap printers go. I mean, you're getting near the performance of a G Max, not the not a G Max performance, but close <laughs> for what one fourth the price of a G Max. I mean, you you can't beat that with a ten foot stick. Um, I love this model. I, I do wish you would make a rear end for it, you know, something to slap onto the rear end. So, because as soon as you turn it around, you realize that that was a printed surface. Cause it's all flat. It'd be nice if there's another part you could print that would, you know, finish the back of the model. Even have two little holes so, so it could plug in and stay there. That'd be pretty cool. Do it right with a little gap here, so it looks like this, and you wouldn't even be able to tell that it was two parts put together. It looked like the. It would look like the one of these lines that belong there. Um, maybe I'll design something, just, you know, model it after this and make something you can add to the back of the shuttle there. So, how big is this little bugger? I don't know. You're looking at... Uh, 11 and a half inches tall, sitting this way, as it printed. You're looking at nine inches tall. The um, the restriction was the this width here. You know, you couldn't make it any bigger because you'd bump into your limit that way. Width-wise on the print bed, you're talking eight and a half inches. So your limitation is this wing. You can't scale it up anymore because this will exceed your 300 millimeter print volume. Somebody with an S4 could do a nice job on this. <laughs> Make a much, much bigger one. Although, if I were to do this on an S4, um, what I think I would do is I would do separate connected parts, and I would scale the wings up just a little bit, make them a little larger, and then um, in the slicer, very carefully align the wings so that these pins are still centered in these holes, because otherwise you'll melt the parts together when you print them. 
but yeah, maybe if I ever did this again, probably not. There's no reason for me to print this again. I, I would probably scale the wings up just like, you know, maybe three or four percent just to increase this tolerance so they're not quite so loose. But um, otherwise, it's very strong, very clean. As usual, the CR-10 did a magnificent job. Uh, this is nice. Um, uh, I just drill a hole right through here and you can hang this thing right from there. As the center of gravity is this line right here. So you can hang it right from there. Hang it from your ceiling. This thing would look great. Matter of fact, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll hang this thing up there. So it's always hanging there in the background, you know, my little defense force. Protect my farm of printers. I'm up to like seven printers now. <laughs> um, they're all, I got, there's three of them going right now. This one's printing anti-zipper capsules. This one's printing 29 millimeter motor retention modules. And this one's printing a 275 millimeter nose cone. Um, I'm trying to slice a QSN right now, which is um, murdering my computer, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for abusing Simplify 3D. <laughs> Look up what a QSN is. Um, I don't even know if it's going to succeed in slicing it. It's, I think it's crashed. I got core errors from my CPU monitor, so it may have actually crashed Simplify 3D, even though the computer's still running. But, uh, yeah, this is cool. Running into a little problem. I decided to print one of my... Uh, 390 millimeter nose cones, and I'm getting these bands. Something's not right. Oop. And it's going okay. It was dropping down the new to the next zipper, so I had to make sure it's um, level. It's fine. But, um, so I got these bandings that are annoying. I need to get rid of them. That's in the, that's the printer. Um, I think maybe I tightened up the y-axis too much and I'm bumping into something because I can feel it jump when I raise it up and down. I don't see it in the the Mars shuttle. Oh, I do see it in the Mars shuttle. It's just less pronounced. If you look in the Mars shuttle here, you can see it. Right there, right there, right there. So the same banding is there. It's just less pronounced on the large surfaces. Okay, now that's interesting. Yeah, right here. I bet you they line up. Yep. Same locations, roughly. So something's not right there. I gotta figure out what's wrong with that because my CR-10 is my baby. I can't let nothing happen to that. <laughs> I depend on that to print my yummy, delicious, gigantic models. But, um, yeah, there you go. You wanted a Star Wars model? You got a Star Wars model, buddy. I'm gonna, I want to print a Star Trek model as well. I'm just trying to figure out which one I want to print. Um, this is months away at least. But I would love, if I could, especially if I could find one, I'd love to print a D-Space 9, if that's even possible. That would be very, very slick to print a D-Space 9. So I might try that at some point. Um, if I could find a 3D model of it. But uh, there you go. Enjoy. <laughs>